Here are two solo Solak strategies that won't break the bank that you should definitely try out. For the first setup, we're taking advantage of Bic Arrows, which increase your poison damage by up to 400%. This setup is a lot of fun, because once you're maxed out on Bic Arrow stacks in the later parts of the fight, your DPS rotation doesn't really matter a whole lot, as the vast majority of your damage will be coming directly from your poison hits. To maximize poison damage, I'm using Quorum Incense Sticks, Weapon Poison++, plus plus plus, and Cinderbane Gloves. Poison has a chance to hit your target with every single hit splat on them, so the more hit splats you can apply, the more times poison will hit. To maximize the amount of hits we're going to see, I'm going to be using a Blood Reaver Familiar and the Vampirism Aura. The Blood Reaver will hit your target every single time you heal from any source, which makes the Vampirism Aura extremely strong in a poison build. One additional way to maximize your amount of hits is the Wen Book, but in testing, I found the Jazz Book to be pretty similar, so take whatever you like. If your life points are full, the Vampirism Aura and Soul Split won't make your Blood Reaver attack, so consider bringing the Dark Crystal from Morvan Slayer Challenge. It makes it so that you'll never be able to reach full HP, as every time you heal, you'll also take a small amount of damage. In testing, this worked out very well, but I'd consider it an advanced method because it really starts to hurt and is completely unnecessary. That being said, the Dark Crystal can be a really good option for the sections of the fight where you're not taking a lot of damage, being the arms, the legs, and the final phase of the fight. This is because normally you're going to get up to full HP pretty quickly, and at that point your chance of getting poison damage gets reduced significantly. So if you do have issues with those parts of the boss fight, you can try out the crystal and it will help out those parts of the fight a lot at the cost of survivability for the rest of the fight. For the rest of the setup, I'm wearing Perk Serenic, an Amulet of Souls, an Asylum Surgeon's Ring, and a Decimation Bow. My bow is perked with Precise 6 and Equilibrium 4, so budget stuff. The whole setup should run you a couple hundred mil, and I wouldn't recommend anything much lower or you're gonna have a bad time. For my invent, I've got a mix of Blue Blubber Jellies and Sardom and Bruise for healing. You can also use the Blood Reaver Scroll to heal you a thousand life points every time you fire it, but I didn't find that I needed it often. For a shield, I've got a Strike Bow, but really anything works. To round out my invent, I've got Vulnerability Bombs, a Power Burst of Vitality, and Runes for Disruption Shield and Smoke Cloud, although these are super optional. I also have Full Arrows in my invent as a switch, but these are also optional and we'll talk more about that later. The main goal for Phase 1 is to clear out all 8 Rootlings and deal damage to Solak while applying as many Bic Arrow stacks as you can. The boss phase is at 1.5 million life points, but if you need to go through the Phase 1 mechanics multiple times, that's entirely fine. We're not going for the world record here. One thing to look out for in Phase 1 is making sure you periodically hit Solak to make sure your big stacks don't get reset to zero. You want to accumulate them through Phases 1 and 2, so that for Phase 3 and 4, you're on 400 stacks and hitting like a truck. The hardest part of the entire kill is arguably arms and legs at the end of Phase 1. They're the only real DPS check where you don't have a ton of free poison damage, and because of this, I would suggest saving your death swiftness for them. It seems a little counterintuitive because you'd normally want to save your damage to the core so you could one cycle it, but once again, we're not going for the world record here, and a two cycle core is completely fine. Heading into Phase 2, there isn't a ton to look out for here. Start off by cleansing your Blight Stacks at Marathel, and then go up on two eruptions to clear the storm. Clear the other two eruptions, and then you can stand in the cubby and start doing damage. Just make sure to tag Solak between each eruption and at the start of the phase so you don't lose your Bic Stacks. This is also a really good time to throw Storm Shards so that you can shatter on Phase 4. You should be able to phase the boss right around the arm climb, and you'll notice that the poison is starting to hit quite a bit more than it was in the first phase. On phase 3, you should see an absolute ton of damage coming in, and phasing the boss should be very effortless. Go around the room charging pads, get the boss to 200k, and lower the elf. Once you're ready to head into phase 4, finish off Aerithor and get ready for the easiest DPS race of your life. Just make sure not to forget your vulnerability bomb and your adren pot, and try to shatter when the boss is almost dead. If you backload your damage on phase 4, you'll buy yourself a little bit more time before getting insta-killed. I'm also going to mention that your big arrow stacks will last for 30 seconds, and what this means is that for phase 4, which is generally going to be shorter than 30 seconds, you can switch to full arrows to get even more damage. It won't impact the amount of poison procs you get or your poison damage, but it will make your abilities hit slightly harder, which can be kind of nice. And that's it for the first method. I was pleasantly surprised at how effective it is, and this is easily the best boss in the entire game to showcase and take advantage of big arrows. For the second setup, we're getting a little less complicated and pretty classic. We're going to be going in four-piece Ganodermic, an Elder Wand and Virtus book, and we are going to be abusing the absolute crap out of Greater Concentrated Blast and Animate Dead to cruise to the easiest Solak kill in the West. I would recommend the Maniacal Aura and a Rip Redeemed Familiar with auto-firing scrolls for this one, because outside of that, the loadout we're going to be bringing doesn't exactly scream damage. The invent setup is roughly the same as the last one, but I also have runes for Exsanguinate, Incite Fear, and of course, Animate Dead. 
To hit the DPS checks and deal a ton of damage with this setup, it's pretty simple. Just make sure you're using Greater Concentrated Blast as often as humanly possible, which is pretty much going to be every third ability for the entire fight. Outside of that, we should be good to get started. Phase 1 is just like before, but try and save some stuff for the arms and legs. You also want to stand where I'm standing here, because your Tsunami and Dragon Breath will hit both arms and both legs, assuming you're targeting the far one. If you happen to have Greater Chain, it definitely helps, but it's not needed. As with the previous setup, I was able to get the boss to 1.5 million life points without dealing with a second set of roots. But if you do end up with a second set, it really isn't the end of the world, especially when you're learning. In a normal learning trajectory, the first thing that you're going to master is the mechanics, and then once you've got the mechanics down, it'll be easier and easier to go faster. So if you end up dealing with multiple sets of roots, that's totally fine. Phase 2 also starts off just like before, where you're going to clear your stacks at Marathil and then go wipe out the storm by going up on two eruptions. After you clear the other two, you're going to stand in the cubby and start dealing damage. At this point, you're going to really notice the lack of big arrows. You're not going to be hitting it quite as hard as last time, and for that reason, you're likely going to phase it to 800,000 life points a little bit later. If you get a tornado attack, just use Barricade and make sure to go back to Marathil to clear your stacks before you start on phase 3. This setup is a lot more low and slow than the previous one, where you actually start to be able to build up really competitive damage. With this setup, you're going to be relying on your Animate Dead, and your Greater Concentrated Blast is going to give you just enough damage to keep going. At the start of phase 3, you're just going to go around charging up pads to give yourself an opportunity to soul split, and you're just going to keep dealing damage to Solak. The phase HP is 200k, but you don't want to get it all the way there. You want to stop a little bit before that so that I can introduce the strategy that we're going to be using to be able to clear phase 4 with a setup that is not entirely conducive to damage. Phase 4 has 200,000 life points. And with our current setup, that's going to be a bit of a tall order. So we're going to get the boss to just above 200,000 life points, Sunshine, and then use Shatter to get the boss well below the normal phase HP than it should be. This works because technically the hard HP cap only applies as soon as you've hit the boss once past the HP limit. By using Shatter, we're just making our final hit a 30k, which allows you to get a way easier phase 4. Once you're done your early Shatter, you can stack up another 8, 9, or 10 shards, finish off the elf, and head into phase 4, with about 170,000 damage to do and another full Shatter that's going to do another 30k. Just don't forget your Vuln Bomb, and you want to make sure you're Shattering towards the end of the last phase. And there you go. These are two really cool solo select strategies. Both of them are fairly inexpensive and should be a really, really good jumping off point for learning. Obviously, these are beginner setups and aren't going to get you the quickest kill times of all time, but getting between four and six kills an hour with a setup like this, I think is really solid. By the way, if you're looking for a more thorough guide that doesn't really talk about strategies as much as going through every single mechanic painstakingly slowly, I have a 40 minute long Solat guide from a couple years ago that is still pretty relevant for that stuff today. So anyway, if you want to check that out, it's in the description down below. Happy Solacking, everyone.